All right, now, as we await possible reaction from the President of the United States on this reaction now from a guy who would like to be President of the United States, this is his first TV interview since officially announcing his candidacy. I'm talking about Republican Congressman Tom Tancredo. Congressman, um, if you're President of the United States and you heard these guys were released, no one had to apologize, sort of an even Steven type deal, is it? Yeah. I'm sorry. Is it even Stevens? Part. Did everyone come out okay on this? Yeah, probably so. Uh, I, I think uh, that General McInerney is right when he talks about the fact that in the public relations war, um, Ahmadinejad is probably a little bit ahead. But you know, I, I think this whole affair, Neil, tells you just tells you an awful lot about Iran and about the problems we face in dealing with the country. It is my understanding that this was this whole thing was um, concocted by and carried out by a segment of the government, mostly the, the Revolutionary Guard. They, this, is, this really wasn't a, a decision made by the, quote, government of Iran to do this. And, and one has to really wonder about dealing with how you deal with a country that has this sort of a, a divided sense of, of, or not sense of, but a divided leadership and that can act somewhat arbitrarily, capriciously, because really you have to wonder, what did they gain by this whole thing? It, it, was it just simply all done for a publicity stunt? And, and if so, what was the purpose? I don't think that Britain is, has been humbled by this, and, and I don't think most people who watched the hug fest uh, that uh, you just showed uh, believe that all of a sudden these sailors uh, went through this the, or, or were succumbed to the Stockholm syndrome or anything like that. I think everybody knows it was stage managed. So what was the purpose? And, and I'm not sure that they know exactly what it was. Well, you know what? You know what? They, they, they came out of this with higher oil prices than where they were. So the country that produces all this oil got a lot more money for that oil. Um, they but came out of this, down. Congressman, I think, with a debate at least on, on, on sanctions at the U.N. over their nuclear program, stalled at the very least. So the, uh, well, in, in a way, I know this is a crazy analogy, but it's like they started a fire and are praised for putting it out. Perhaps, but I, I don't know that anybody, in the U even in the U.N., I don't know if anybody thinks they're, that they're a more rational country than what they thought of before this all happened. This was an irrational act, I believe, and it, it, it really, in the total scheme of things, I don't think benefits them. And, and as I say, the worrisome part about this is trying to deal with a country like Iran under well, these Well, if you were president, Congressman, and, and we now have these reports, and these seem to be confirmed now by the general and, and a couple of other uh, former hostages in prior events, that the, the mere presence of, of U.S. ships, including the Nimitz, speeding its way uh, to the area, did kind of accelerate this, uh, what happened today. Do you buy that? Well, it, it's possible, of course. And it, this is all such... Um tea leaf reading, that it's very difficult to determine exactly why it all occurred. But I do think that it is important for us to be ready for all eventualities. You have to with Iran, because you just cannot count on it. You can't. It's not like dealing with a, quote, regular country. The, the diplomacy is a lot different. You have to be ready to do a lot of things. And, and including this, you have to think to yourself, um, I'm going to have to probably deal with an Iran in one of two ways. And one is an Iran that is headed by Ahmadinejad and company, the, the supreme leader of the mullahs, with an, a nuclear device. Or an Iran that is run by a government that is willing to live with its neighbors and no longer a threat in the region. Now, which one do we all want? Well, of course, it's the latter. So how do you get that? What actions can we take to actually make that happen? Should we be involved with regime change activities. I think all of this has got to be on the table. I think we've got to think about why, the ways that we could use as push may come to shove to actually change the regime. It's not something, because I, I think that dealing with the former, dealing with the Iran head, headed by the, the mullahs and, and uh, the supreme leader and Ahmadinejad and all these various factions is too unstable. It, it's just too much of a threat. Okay, Congressman. Very good seeing you uh, again. And likewise. All right. Thank Tom you.